Sorry, it's my mom about Taylor Swift tickets. <laughs> okay. Did you get did you get Taylor Swift tickets? Um, I mean I didn't get tickets, but I got through to the verified um pre-sale. Oh, it's the pre-sale. Yeah, you just have to like register for the verified fan. And so I right. did that. And then uh hopefully now I get an access code and then and then I right. get tickets and yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm excited for you. Thanks. <laughs> I was so upset. I was really like, I had given up hope that she wasn't going to come to Toronto. And then, here we are. I honestly thought you meant your mum there for a second. I forgot. No. Yeah, no, Taylor. Taylor, of course. Taylor. Taylor, right. Um, right. Should we, uh, should we get started then? Sure. It's the podcast of a generation with me, Miles Dobson. This week's guest, he's an actor, dancer, avid Swifty, and black market plant dealer, Brennan Klost. Hello, welcome to this week's episode of the podcast of a generation. My guest this week is Brennan Klost. Brennan Klost, hello. Hello. Thanks for having uh, me. Uh, thank you for doing this. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy Taylor Swift schedule to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to join me. Uh, what are we drinking today, Brennan? Well, today we are drinking a, this is my like special drink. So I don't actually it's, have this oh, it's, every it's, single morning. It's very this special. Is, yeah, it's yeah. a very special drink. Um, so Not many people drink this one. Grande non-fat caramel macchiato. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> okay, but I am lactose intolerant. Mm. So I am now trying, for the second time in my life, I am trying lac- lactase type deal. Like the, the lactose like the pill? pills. The pills, yes. Oh, you could have just gotten it with soy milk. No, I'm... D- this is... This is I'm suffering for my bit. art. I'm suffering for my art. <laughs> so... Um, I'm doing this. The last time I took these, it made things worse. So if nothing else, you this will be a fun ride. Cut the episode early, run to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cut to black screen of me groaning three hours later. Oh, God. Um, well, okay. Salut. Mm. Have you tried it yet? Have you had a sip? Brennan, that tastes like ice cream. <laughs> no, it's really sweet, actually. Today, it tastes mine tastes extra sweet. I I forgot. Usually, when I do get it, I'll get it half sweet. I forgot to say that, so sorry. So, um, why why does this get you out of bed then? This particular drink, um, that tastes like ice cream. I feel like the thing with this drink and just like a Starbucks is it became something so nostalgic for me when I was living in New York because mm. growing up there was this like chapter starbucks combo near my parents house that oh, now yeah. i feel like chapters chapters is like gone now right um now it's just indigo now it's everywhere. indigo yeah yeah but anyways right. this one was like really special to me because we would always go they had like a kid's area in the back like we would go from when i was really really little um and i did a theater camp when i was little and one of the uh women who was like one of the older camp counselors Ended up then working at that Starbucks. So then whenever I would go with my mom, she'd always give me a free kids hot chocolate. And then when I was living in New York, there was a Starbucks kind of like diagonally through Lincoln Center that became my escape from the school. Because I'd be in the school from like 8 a.m. to like 10 yeah. p.m. And then at 11 p.m. I'd be like, I need out. And I would just walk to Starbucks, get this drink, and then like walk back to my dorm. So it was like home. It was like That's comforting. Sweet. It was like... Yeah. Yeah. It's like a little, little like a reminder of home or a little, little like a uh, memory lane type thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And this was um, at when, when you were at, uh, when you were at Juilliard? Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I've just continued. I've tried like other drinks, but the caramel macchiato is the all time fave that I was coming back to. So I will give my hottest of takes on this. Okay. Well, and you're a bit of a coffee. I was going to say coffee snob, but coffee connoisseur, <laughs> <laughs> right? You have a good, coffee, you have a good I go, I, I wear, I wear snob with a badge of honor. I think there, I think there's, uh, I think my issue with, and uh, this is my little, I'll just stand on my little soapbox for a moment. Starbucks is, is not a good company. Well, no, they're a bank. I read a whole article about how Starbucks oh, yes, is Yes, they're bank. a bank. That's right. That essentially like. You store money in Starbucks. Yes, because they like, won't let you take the money out of their app. So once it's in there, even yeah. if 
and you can only put a certain amount of money in. Like you can't put like a dollar in. You have to put like twenty bucks or whatever. I think twenty five is the minimum. Twenty five. And that's Aeroplan points, which now I'm on like a points kick. I feel like that's the newest thing as an adult that I'm like, ooh, points. Like <laughs> I have all these points cards all of a sudden. Anyways, but if I want to get Aeroplan points, you have to minimum put in fifty bucks to even then like they don't anything lower than that. I'm pretty sure it's fifty bucks. Wow. Anyways, so Yeah. So they're a bank. So they use the money that people put in there and then they, they put that in the bank and gather the interest. Mm-hmm. And then that's how they afford to um, litigate against union members. <laughs> because yeah. in case you, you didn't know, not you, Brennan, specifically, but no, they, they, are, they, are, they are one of the worst uh, anti-union companies in the United States, for sure. I don't know what they're like in Canada, actually. I didn't but know there's that. there is there's been efforts across the board in the states to unionize, and uh, they have fired, litigated, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to, to within an inch of of the teeth to to try and stop unionization in their stores. Well, so I um, did not know that. No, I know it's this is this is. I mean, again, I don't think it really. I don't know whether it happens in Canada or in the UK or Australia, but in the states, they are very vehemently against unionizing um and we stand with unions <laughs> we do stand with unions. absolutely do. absolutely yeah um and and f- as a as a as a former barista they don't make coffee at starbucks anymore what do you I mean you s- like it is a vending machine the machine oh, that they the like machine a, that like they use or like a no not coffee. even that but like, like that. but when i when i tried to get a job at starbucks years and years ago it was still like you went in you you had the amount of coffee in the thing and you pushed the button blah 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 now it is literally a touch screen and they push the button stop yeah oh see i've only like done like quick drive through today it was the first time i've like gone into a physical starbucks yeah and and wasn't i wasn't paying attention yeah this is this is kind of the thing that's happening in the industry now there's a there's a if next time you're in new york there's this company that is like taking over new york i think it's called nothing coffee but i might be wrong but they are just the aim is to try and eliminate as many baristas from the process as possible so they have these 30 forty thousand dollar coffee machines that are vending machines oh actually did you okay you're in toronto uh good good did you see good good around the city yeah yeah same deal no, really? you can't now. They shut down. They they were oh. open for six months and then they shut down. But <laughs> same deal. They use the same machine that this com- this company in in New York is using. Um, wow. Which is literally you don't train your baristas. You just tell just them like... what the coffee looks like and put and they put the cup under it and it does everything for you. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Like takes it's the same thing with. I mean, not the same thing, but it's similar of what like actors and writers are feeling against like AI. It's like why are you giving robots mm. creative human jobs like barista i would argue is a creative job it's like a yes highly skilled there's, job yeah there's well i wouldn't say highly skilled but there's an artistry to it there's definitely sure. yeah there's definitely like a craft to it yeah um yeah yeah, yeah. have them be the like checkout person instead like the what, what are they called cashiers cashier yeah let them be the cashier <laughs> instead like that's yeah there's no craft re- uh required for that there's there's a one on Queen Street in Toronto that's just for pickup now. Have you seen? Really? Have you been down there? Yeah, it's no. like a Starbucks. It's a Starbucks that you just order on the app and you just go in and pick it up. You don't like they have there's one no person people. there. No, there's oh. a fly just flew into my face oh. there. No, there's there's no people. There's just um, well no there are there's like two people and they make the coffees and put them down and then they just check your app and then they give it to you. Wow. We it's are we are it's the it's yeah it's on Queen on, near Ossington. Yikes. We're in like the beginning of the future. I mean, it's the slow crawl to never to interacting with a human again, which for some people I imagine is pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I have introverted days when I'm like, I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to leave yeah. my apartment. But yeah. Not to that extent. What do you what do you usually do on those days then? Mm, I mean, like I feel like this is a, especially like from the pandemic, this is like a habit that i held on to but i would like play animal crossing for hours mm-hmm. reorganize maybe my office you know like i love doing like little home projects I'm recently into plants i'm having like a huge green thumb phase right now i went from having no plants to now i mm-hmm. think i have 
like 18 in my apartment <laughs> in the last like month and a half I've just like been on Facebook marketplace <laughs> someone's selling a watermelon pepperomia and I'm like purchase pick it up oh yeah so people sell people sell plants that they that are just getting too much for them or that they Either they can't seem to keep alive or or? they've like propagated their own like baby plant right. from their mother plant and then I mean honestly I'm almost going to start doing that because I I have a couple of spider plants. I'll have different like variegations. I don't have any that match, but I have like one that has white in the middle, green on the outside. The other's like the reverse. And I have one that's curly, which mm-hmm. is really pretty. And they're all at the stage where they're starting to give off like spider plant babies. So I just gave Brit one. I'm about to give my brother one. I gave my mom <laughs> one. But once I run out of like friends to give them to, I'm maybe going to like not start like a spider plant business, but like maybe list them on Facebook marketplace. You get, I mean, you can't get very much, but like spider plants are pretty common. It's um, jacket money. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. my Starbucks money. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's your Starbucks money. Sell a plant, buy a Starbucks. It's exactly. Great. Exactly. Wow. I can't believe that that's like a, like a burgeoning, burgeoning, fledgling beginning market i don't know what the word is i can't yeah. believe that that's oh, like, a, a, no, like, a like a growing whole, market it's a whole like industry and there's like facebook buy tra- buy buy and sell or just like trade mm. and people will do yeah. plant meetups that they host like in trinity bellwoods and you like bring plants and like trade and see what people bring and meetups yeah i didn't wow. realize this was a whole it's like a i find I, i'll like fall down a like youtube rabbit hole and then i like hyper fixate on this new like niche for a while, pandemic, it was like The Sims 4. I w- and now, even still, now I'm like deep into The Sims 4 on YouTube. Um, then it was Animal Crossing. Now it's plants. There are so many plant YouTubers out there that like- Are they really? Oh my God. And they have like hundreds of thousands of subscribers. It's insane. And it's just and it's, them showing how to grow a plant or like the progress of the plant that they've had. There are like stuff. plant tours in their home or um, just like a lot of people will do these like Ikea cabinet greenhouses in their home so it's just like an right. ikea shelf that's like glass and then they put a humidifier and they turned it into like a whole it's so relaxing to watch and fascinating and then wow. and then it, like if you have the same plant you're like oh that works for them i could modify the care that i don't know i on i just love to care for things whether it's like my animal crossing people or my not people villagers <laughs> or my <laughs> cats or my plants or anyway so why did i wow. get talking about plants that's that, that's just what we do on this show we just Sorry, drink coffee and we chat laugh. away no yeah. don't apologize whatsoever well, do you <clears throat> do you um do you think that you would pivot to more plant content on your channel and 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 how do you how do you feel like that would be uh appreciated or uh, uh received, received by your audience <laughs> um I'm having a lot of fun making like dance adjacent content right now. Um, Cause I haven't like fr- kind of from the pandemic, I've been like in and out of the studio, but not like dancing very consistently. So this honestly is a nice excuse or reason for me to like keep my butt in the studio. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I do think I want to make other stuff. Um, like I, flippantly mentioned Plumbella who's this like she's actually from England as well uh, um she's from northern England that was not a northern that's Australian accent. that's yeah, not even sorry. close to Britain northern. I whatever anytime we try <laughs> anything else any other accent it just like comes out Australian um, and you trained at Juilliard right <laughs> yeah but in dance not in dialect <laughs> um anyways Plumbella yes. is from northern yes. England Yes. And she's this, like, one of the most famous or, like, most, I don't know, well-renowned Sims 4 YouTubers. Anyways, I, like, flippantly mentioned her in a video, briefly, that I was, like, talking about something else, but I was talking about, like, oh, having, like, the lore. I think I was talking about the next step. I'm like, has anyone ever compiled, like, the next step lore about, like, why there's a chicken thing on the wall and, like, why Studio A is, like, in an old loft, like, an old to- factory? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know. I was just thinking about that and, like, who's you know outlined that like miss kate's mom and gave the studio to her like has anyone done like the lore of the studio 
Clumbella does like the Sims 4 lore. So that's why that's, I mentioned that. And people in the comments in my video were like, oh my fucking God, no way. Can I swear on this? Yeah, of course you're fine. Okay. It's, it's encouraged. Um, oh my fucking God, no way. Like he, w worlds colliding, the next step in the Sims. So I'm like, now I'm thinking like, I'm not good at building in the Sims. I feel like I think I'm good because I've watched so many Sims YouTubers build these like incredible things. But maybe it'd be a fun video to make, like, me struggling through a Sims build, building, like, the next step dance studio in The Sims. I don't know. Like, maybe I would do, yeah. like, that and then pepper in, like, a Sims. I don't know. Britt and I love making, like, gaming content together, too. So her and I have talked yeah. about touring our Animal Crossing islands for each other for YouTube. Wow. So do you think, do you think that people... Because I think I've noticed this as well, that, that I'm, I'll mention stuff and, and people are, like, surprised that I, that I know uh, that corner X, Y, and Z, that. whatever, whatever, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Uh, do, do you think that there's, like, um, as, as, a, as a public figure that you, that the audience kind of doesn't realize you're a real person and that maybe you have interests as well? Yeah, or I feel like I feel like there's a few like internet corners that feel a little more like I mean not this, but like kind of feel more like dark web, more like you especially like through the pandemic where you like fell into this interest in covid times and so then you only talk to like internet friends about this corner of the internet and it feels very like it doesn't actually exist. So mm -hmm. I think the minute that you realize like an actor who's like a real person in the real world that you've like seen beyond just like their shows or like in press or on their like YouTube channel, whatever it on podcasts, whatever that it then makes that like really real for you that you're like, Oh, other people in the world consume this same little like niche interest that I have. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like, yeah, exciting. And also like, it's like seeing your kindergarten teacher at the grocery store. You're like, well, what? why are yeah. you here too yeah yeah especially when um especially when it's like people i mean certainly becoming a, a tns cast member really um opened my eyes to how how like removed people think that actors are from the world because like someone someone like i commented on someone's post once and they like it became a badge of honor for them on their on their profile and, and then i see that there are like accounts where it's like like the main point of the account is trying to get as many people to see engage the account as possible like, yeah, engage yeah. Or, or see the account and that's that's it, it, on the one hand, I understand it's like you know about getting attention and getting the getting the attention of the people that who who you admire, but also it does kind of give the impression that you think that you know and those people think that actors just don't have lives that we live in boxes, you know, in in a we cupboard only show and we up take us yeah TV show yeah, and then we disappear and yeah exactly yeah. yeah 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 like CBBC has us all in a cupboard in boxes <laughs> waiting to be pulled out for another season and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, it's it's um. I don't. I don't think I ever remember thinking that of other actors when I was growing up. But then at the same time, the internet wasn't as big of a thing at the time. I know. Like I feel like when I was even in high school, I like just got a Facebook profile, but mm -hmm. I like didn't really know how to use it. I didn't get Instagram until university even though it came out like a couple of years before. But so I just, I can't imagine being like a really young person just immersed in TikTok, yeah. Instagram, Snapchat, mm -hmm. Twitter, which is not Twitter anymore, whatever the fuck it's X. Called. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, what's the new one? Threads. Threads, and, yeah. like you're just saturated in the internet. And I think it, do it does make things not feel like, tangible of the yeah yeah like of the physical world to you i don't know did you notice that in the pandemic did you like fall into a like i mean i was like streaming your the entire felt, pandemic like, your whole social sphere oh uh, i mean my entire like i like i i was streaming on twitch for for two yeah. two and a half years and that was how i had a job yeah that was how i was having interactions with the general public as, as well as like the friends that i'd grown to to know over over the two years and stuff um 
and it kept me sane, honestly, if nothing mm-hmm. else. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I got my first panic attack in March 2020. And having the... I, I got into this space where I, I would need to just go in the bath and just look at TikTok for three hours to disassociate enough to just calm myself down. Yeah. Yeah, honestly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And Me it's, too. <laughs> it, 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 oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I think it, it's so, and then I don't think, do you think that we would, do you think that if that hadn't have happened, we'd be where we are now as a society, as you were? But, um, you know, with the, with the, the race to to AI everything, the 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 incorporation of Zoom into so many more people's lives. The I mean, like we're doing this podcast over a Zoom style thing, yeah. and I feel like I feel like that would be maybe less accepted before the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Even just I'm thinking like working from home, like my brother, my boyfriend, my parents my brother's girlfriend, you know, like every, pretty much everybody that I know now exclusively works from home. Like they don't, my brother has an office space, but I, I don't think it's required. He ever goes in. Wow. Like he goes in maybe once a week. Yeah. If he wants to like, it's yeah. just so, I think it is, I think it has really changed like the social um, sphere of society mm-hmm. that like work and home are the same but then like if you want to have fun well and also like if you want to have fun a lot of people will then just stay home because it's also like they feel so safe they feel comfortable and i do think if you had any sort of like social anxiety or like i have ocd specifically like germophobia ocd and so the pandemic was really like three yeah. things in the air for me so sure. especially coming out of it i felt i noticed that i had to really like gain a lot of confidence back to then like go out in public so and much the same anxious the whole time you know yeah so yeah, yeah I feel like so it has much. really changed yeah it, it, it like i i think i think it was um agoraphobia for me like i was just like being outside freaked me out um be and then like i've slowly had to just push my push my comfort zone again and again to just slowly get back to a place where i feel like comfortable being in a park <laughs> being around people in the world it's it's been a real process for for a lot of people i imagine i mean i don't think either of us have particularly unique experiences with that but i, no. I think it's i think it, it's <laughs> just comforting sadly <laughs> yeah yeah you know, we're all like, we're all wrecked together well, fuck <laughs> from the pandy but then so wait was it with the plants during the pandemic or is that a new thing no that's new (laughs) (laughs) okay i feel like there was now as i what's so exciting too what i love about youtube is that i will like get recommended a video and then it's like i'm kind of on the i feel like i'm on the edge of this new world and i'm like oh what's an ikea greenhouse and then i watch like someone else's video about it and i'm like oh this is a really hard thing to get oh this video is from March, April, 2020. So I think there were a lot, there was like a big, when the pandemic hit, a lot of people were then like, let me grow my plant collection. Let me like Mm -hmm. build this hard to find Ikea greenhouse cabinet with all the bells and whistles. Um, But that was not, that that wasn't me. Mine's just a new fixation. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I had, I did. I made a lot of bread. Oh, you did. See, I didn't. Yeah. I don't think I fell into any. I didn't make bread. I didn't make what was that coffee one? Whipped coffee. Oh, it was such bollocks. Yeah, I didn't make that. It looked kind of nice. It was. So, d- 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 oh, I don't, get, don't remember what it's called. Hang on, let me bring it up. I, it, d- d- uh, I'm literally looking up pandemic coffee now. <laughs> Hang it. Dalgona, Dalgona coffee. Oh, yeah. No, South didn't Korean, try that. South didn't Korean make bread. drink. What was another one? Um, I don't recall. Honestly, I don't there remember so much many, of it. There were so many like trends that I feel like started right at the beginning. Like it was. Yeah. No, like it was. Week, it was, there was like, like a new. Yeah. Well, I mean, they had to be. Like we were all bored, bored out of our minds. Uh, yeah. What I I got into haircuts in the pandemic. 
haircuts like yeah. giving them or getting them like cutting my own hair and then cutting my whole family's hair and my friend's hair i was like the family barber uh-huh and then it was continued. that always a passion of yours or was this no just... no i just uh <laughs> i cut my own hair and then my dad really needed a haircut and then i did a really good job and then my brother wanted a haircut then my mom wanted a haircut then i groomed our dog too <laughs> <laughs> i was like everyone needed Upkeep. Oh, God. Yeah. So what did you do when you ran out of people with hair to cut then? Well, then everyone needed another haircut. It was like every four oh, weeks. Was, I was, was like, every I was four weeks you... Yeah. Wow. <laughs> but doing it for free. Yeah. Doing it like pro bono. Whatever. My parents gave me meals and alcohol. Do you think, do you think <laughs> that people were going to be willing to pay you for your amateur haircuts? I'm quite good. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Like, okay. Quite good. Okay. And I'm quick. All right. I started timing ah. myself because I would get like I was really consistent with like the job that I would do, mm-hmm. and then I would I would like try beat my record every time. So I got my dad's haircut, and my dad I was giving him like a fade. I was given like, wow, cleaned up around the ears, neck, fade up, trim everything, and I could do it in like nine and a half minutes. I was like really fast. Was right why what, what was the focus on speed? Well, like just why for why fun, were you? Child. I'm really competitive. <laughs> it's just for you fun. Were... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how did I do it last time? He's like, twelve minutes. I'm like, okay, time me. Like trying to get it down. That sounds horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I would be, like, gripping the chair, hoping that you didn't cut my ear or something. No, 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 I'm very careful. You know, okay. I'm tender, All right. okay. I'm a caring person. But but quick. But competitive and quick, yeah. Was that going to be, like, a career for you if you hadn't become uh, a dancer or an actor? No. No, no I was going to go to med school if I wasn't a dancer. Med school? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, I actually just found, I've been cleaning out my office, I'm going to, like, redesign it in here. And I just found all my old um, biology and calculus and chemistry notes from high school. I don't know why I saved them, but I'm glad I did because I was looking. I was like, wow, these study notes are beautiful. Um, yeah, I, I wanted to probably go into like pediatrics or um, for a while I was talking like neuro. I wanted to be like a neurosurgeon. Wow. But I think honestly, I'm a little too, I've grown into being more like squeamish now. I wasn't mm-hmm. squeamish at all in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that I took the path I did. So then when, okay, so then how did you go from, so you were a dancing potential med school student? Yeah, I think I was just, like I said, competitive and I was really intense. I mean, I'm still pretty intense, but I was like really intense in high school. And like, <laughs> basically I was training 40, 40 to 50 hours a week at my dance studio Mm -hmm. And then coming home and I had no social life besides like at dance with my dance friends. But like I didn't hang out with them outside of the dance studio because then I was at home doing homework, studying. Um, And I didn't want to go into dance. My like mom and my dance teacher at the time totally like orchestrated and convinced me to audition for schools. So it's so it's the reverse of like I want to dance and you would I don't care if you won't let me and it's the reverse it was like I don't want to dance please don't make me <laughs> yeah and I think my mom like really knew that like my mom is my best 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 friend and I think she like knew that in my heart of hearts I would have been really sad to give up dance after high school <laughs> right. Um, right, right but uh, but I was like logically I need a good job and competitive and my prom date um, she got into Harvard. So I was like, and she was my lab partner at school. So mm-hmm. we were always like, my whole group of friends all went into like great university programs, um, very competitive, very like smart programs. So that was like my, I was like, I'm going to get into, and I'm going to be a doctor too. And <laughs> whether I actually wanted it or not, I don't know. It was just like, I think I convinced myself that I wanted it at the time, you know? Right. So where yeah. did that competitiveness come from then? Um... <laughs> turned into like a therapy <laughs> session <laughs> listen that's what podcasting is baby listen <laughs> i don't know i I've, I've like always been really competitive and i think dance then also like heightened that within me um mm. like i think i was a pretty like competitive kid but i think dance made me realize that being competitive wasn't necessarily like an ugly quality to have it was actually like oh, a really? good thing And it was like your edge over other people and it could make you like better yourself and challenge yourself. And um, then I was like, oh, I like being competitive. 
and I like accepted it about myself and then it I became more confident. And I suppose it was it was also accepted and encouraged in in that that world as well. And like like rewarded, it's kind of yeah. rewarded, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like you were the, if you were competitive and you were the one at the front and you were like, you know, dancing your ass off at the competition convention, the teachers would like pick you and you would get a scholarship and is that not like also the toxic side of the dance, the dance world, like the the amount of com- competitiveness and and yeah, the... like pitting dancers against each other. I think there is yeah. a lot of it, like a lot of that. I've noticed has started changing, which is good. Oh, um, really? Yeah, and like the studio that I'm teaching at now, uh, especially with all the like strikes going on, I've been like, bring me in as much as you want. <laughs> I'm free. <laughs> so uh, I've been teaching there a lot through the summer, and that studio, the atmosphere that melissa melissa's the studio owner and melissa was the choreographer on the next step for seasons one and two. Oh, that's really and great now she's opened her own like training program yeah um and just the atmosphere and the like with between the students and like from her and all the teachers that are there it's so different in a great way than like the strict scary dance studios i grew up going to how much of that is the like the old guard dying out or the old guard like moving on or being hopefully not cancelled um, to it, it, meaning that like people that that went through that now know what not to do? Mm, yeah, I feel like it's like I th- think it's probably similar to how like our generation we're like the therapy generation, right? Like therapy mm. was started to be like talked about and thought about and um people were then like reflecting on and th- and stepping outside of their own experience and looking at like, Oh, how did my parents grow up? Ah, then I can see why they did this to me and I can forgive them or at least understand why yeah. it was that way. And I think that's true too, for like the people that now are opening their own dance training programs or like taking over dance studios as like other people retire and pass on the torch. they are people kind of like my age and a little bit older that are reflecting on how they grew up and being like, actually, that gave me a lot of... A lot of baggage. Like, yeah, like a lot of like <laughs> traumatic experiences that I don't think serve me. So how can I change it for the younger students that I'm right. teaching now? Yeah. Right, yeah. And that, I, I mean, I think, I think you're seeing that in, in multiple industries as well, or certainly, certainly in the more um, uh, established industries, you know, you're yeah. seeing that in, in film and television and, and, um, in theater and to, to some degree, mm-hmm. not so much in video gaming, but I think that's because the video game industry is, is, uh, a lot newer. Yeah. And, and there's, <clears throat> there's a lot more pushback because of the amount of, um, people that are still, you know, there are people that were making games when games weren't a thing that are still in the industry. And so that's yeah less of a, less of a less less easy to replace that mentality when the people that created the industry are still in it i think yeah yeah i feel like too it's like post me too post me too movement yeah you know like i think a lot of the way that people treat each other has changed beyond just like um yeah yeah (laughs) that and george floyd as well (laughs) you know like i think i think people are really conscious of making other people comfortable yeah and not and also people like aren't getting away with shitty things that they're saying or doing to each other anymore yeah which i think is i mean and we this kind of goes back to our, our chat about like how society has gotten in, involved in social media but social media is like how that happens now a lot of the time it's less it's less about um it's less about being able to go talk to the the media quote unquote it's just you put a post out and 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 if people uh want to share it it's shared yeah it gives like a lot more power or potential power to like everybody well how do you how do you feel about the cuz i mean there's the 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 Lizzo situation right now Are you aware oh of the God, Lizzo I situation I just watched the whole video yesterday yeah. kind of breaking down this girl on TikTok read the whole what was it like mm-hmm. nine page Lawsuit? yeah the, yeah the, she yeah, had the like, lawsuit. just broke it down yeah. yeah yeah so the 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 interesting thing with that is that um the 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 counterpoint that i've seen to all of the allegations is that um the lawyer that's representing these people because they're you know they're 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 out of work dancers they don't have 
hundreds of thousands of dollars to sue Lizzo. Um, but so he's he's working on taking his money from whatever settlement they get. So now the the idea is get this out there as much as possible, as fast as possible. And then that then forces Lizzo's team into a position of do I do I, do I say yes this was me I was at fault I'm really sorry to protect that brand and that image but then basically opening themselves up to a large settlement or do they go these are serious allegations we're not going we're, we're not going to talk about it until we've done investigations etc cetera, etc cetera, and then potentially make people lose faith in that brand and the brand especially the brand with you know that Lizzo is trying to do about body positivity and those kind of things yeah self-love uh, self-love yeah, etc self respect and all yeah. those kind of things to then yeah. to then have that person lose faith in that uh would be would be potentially that would be potentially career ending so that so that's the that's the chess move that the lawyer has made i think which is why it's so widespread on social media yeah yeah so it's it's there are games to play with it i think with the social media thing now and how not that i'm saying that the allegations are wrong or not i'm just no but you're right it's such a tool that can be like capitalized on Mm. like pr is still pr is still pr it's it's not it's not changed it's it's still it's just lightning fast now yeah yeah. Have can... you seen that woman on TikTok that sorry, I'm just talking at you right no, now. No, tell me, tell me. <laughs> Have you seen that woman on TikTok that's like she's like a PR specialist and she talks about I feel like I she just covers saw her like video yesterday. Oh, that was hers? Oh, okay. And, no, that wasn't hers. This was another uh another girl. Um is she like a little bit older? She's like yeah. a mom. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. I've seen tons of her videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I I end up like anytime she comes up, I end up watching like seven or eight of her videos because I'm so fascinated by by the way that um you you have to think about these things from that perspective, from that PR yeah. perspective. Like something happens and you have to be like able to to be to be that kind of forward thinking and knowing how how things are going to be perceived so quickly is i know my boyfriend works in pr but ah. not like celebrity pr and i feel like celebrity pr especially like at that level is so reactive it's a completely different type of pr whereas my boyfriend does like art pr where it's like art galleries or um individual artists that are having a featured spot in a gallery or in an art festival or whatever and so it's like promotional press interviews about their work it's very different than like band-aid pr where you're like ah yeah trying yeah. to fix a cr- crisis pr yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah wow. like him and his colleagues will always say like it's pr not the er as a like <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to be because they'll get all like wound up and stressed and he's like i'm doing art pr like it's pr not the er <laughs> but <laughs> I feel like for like Lizzo's PR, it is the ER, you know, when yeah. like millions of dollars are on the line and yeah, she's like that famous. It is, it is like emergency response, you know, yeah, and for I think real. it is, it's such a different skill set to like solve and come up with these like game plans that are masterful and kind of manipulative. And like, you have to be really smart. Yeah, you like, really do. Psychology to, Yeah. I mean, how much do you think you have to be a sociopath to be in that industry? In which PR in, or in, in that in the in the celebrity PR type deal? Because I feel like you have to you have to be okay with everything. Yeah, like be able to understand people to to a degree that like is kind of creepy. Yeah. <laughs> If you are a PR person, you're listening to this. I apologize in advance. I'd like to start my full page apology. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I feel like you'd have to. Yeah, like it must ask a lot of you because you do have to be radically yeah. accepting anything your client does. If they're on fee with you, if they're paying you to like fix it. Yeah. It's almost with like acting like you can't judge the character that you're playing. You can't judge right. the character of your client. Right. Yeah. Yes. Everyone's a hero. Yeah. Have you seen that have you seen that California has been trying to convince Taylor Swift not to perform there? What? No. Yeah. Yeah, no, they're trying to isn't she about to start her 
yeah. LA. They are they are like multiple people of power in LA are like, please cancel your tour in 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 LA because because the well, city because for, shut down. Well, well, no, the hotel staff are striking in LA. Oh, so shit. like it's like you coming here to Taylor, you coming here is going to make people cross the picket line because they're going to need hotels and there aren't enough to hotels that the staff aren't striking. Whoa, uh-oh. So that's going to be a PR choice for her. Wow. <laughs> I saw um, <laughs> all of this, uh, all of these articles about how Taylor Swift has brought the U.S. out of its recession because of her tour. What? Yeah, what? because of her tour and, like, all the business and, like, People going to restaurants, people flying in, people staying yeah. in hotels, people buying merch, people shopping in the city when they're like making a weekend out of their trip for her tour. She's like fixed the recession in the United States. Good Lord. Isn't that insane? The amount of power that must. I mean. Yeah. Good. I, I mean, my character is a Swifty and I am absolutely not. Your character is a Swifty? Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. I love that. That's so cute. My first, my first scene uh, that I ever filmed with was with Isaiah, and he came in and he wanted to, you know, Henry wanted to talk to me for, and I was just like, okay, you've got, uh, you've got three minutes. I'm trying. I'm in waiting line for, for Taylor Swift tickets. Love a bit of Swifty. <laughs> that was my first line. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's and so iconic. Never listened to a Taylor Swift song in my life. <laughs> my God. Well, you better now as a research. I know. I know. It's I, like. Have you I, since? I mean, from the radio and stuff, but at the okay, time. But you don't elective. You don't I don't. Like yes. I don't go out of my way. No, I don't. Okay. And I know that's travesty. You know what? It's not. It's okay. Everyone. You can have your favorite artists and I have. My favorite artist. That's okay. <laughs> are you an Are you an OG where you like go back and listen to her country stuff as well? You know, no. I think okay. I really became a fan um, of the Red album when that came out. I was like mm. a moody grade eleven or twelve student, like wanted to be in love, like didn't know what it was to be heartbroken even though I'd had like nine girlfriends through high school, but I like, didn't <laughs> know what it meant. And I like listened to that album and that like spoke to my teenage angst and I loved the red album and then speak now loved. And then I like slowly became a fan, but it really wasn't until like, I was sort of just like, yeah, hey, I'll put it on. I don't like, I like her music, but um, then I got my mom reputation tour tickets for Christmas one wow wow for her and i to go and uh it was the best the best show i've ever seen and just also like such a fun uh experience with my mom we got like drunk on the go train into toronto together <laughs> then we got off the train and we were in union and union was still like under construction at this point but there was like one restaurant that was open so we went in but like the kitchen was so overloaded that they didn't have time to get food. So we just got an order of fries for dinner <laughs> and drinks. And then by the time we showed up, we were like really drunk, um, <laughs> but like good, like not ill. Yeah. You know, we yes. were like ready to have fun. And actually this was before I was like a Charlie XCX fan too, because Charlie XCX and I think it was Camila Cabello were opening for Taylor. Wow. And I remember being like, who the fuck is Charlie XCX? And then my mom and I, Camila opened first and we were like, yeah, yeah, Havana, fun. Okay, let's go get more drinks. We leave and we're in line for drinks and we hear Charlie XCX start the da na na I love it. I don't mm -hmm. care. That song. Yes. And my mom and I were like, yes. we love this song. We went running back in. Then was like, oh, this is what Charlie XCX looks like. Like I'd only ever heard her like radio hits. Right. And then... Flash forward to last year, I saw Charlie XCX live twice. I, like, love her. <laughs> um, but anyways, so, like, that was my, like, oh, wow, this is Charlie XCX. Then my mom and I went, and we came back, and we were, like, double fisting gin and tonics, both of us, like, ready to go. Wow. And then Taylor started, and 
we were on the floor also. Like my mom didn't realize, my mom knew I got her a ticket, but she didn't realize how good the seats were. We were like on the floor, but we were in like, I don't know, section C. So we were kind of like not at the front of the main stage. We right. were like kind of at the back of the floor. But for this tour, there were like two other stages. And at one point she like climbed onto a snake <laughs> and it like brought her over <laughs> to the like far stage that then I have to show you this video. Yeah, for a podcast. It's good it's good for a podcast to to show me a video. I'm gonna have to describe this to the listeners now. Oh well you can hear it. You can hear just what my mom says. So this is an audio this is the audio that we're gonna be listening to. Yeah, I'll describe. I'll set the video up. Okay. So basically Taylor climbs on this snake. She leaves the main stage. She's coming towards us. Lands on the stage like a meter or two wow. in front of my mom and I. People start rushing around and my mom and I look at each other and we're like, <gasps> we run forward. So there's maybe only like two people in front of like my mom. Wow. And so it's like Taylor Swift, two bodies, me and my mom. And then this is the video of my mom. <laughs> Just that. Do you hear my mom? Taylor's like right there. <laughs> Taylor's like right there. <laughs> oh, it was so fun. And we got these light up wristbands that then like on the go train home, we were like everyone on the whole go train still had their wristbands lighting up. Like it is a really, it's what you see on TikTok, like people leaving the venue. It's like a unifying experience. Everyone's like shared together. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And then the next day, like hungover, my mom sent me a picture of like her wearing the two wristbands, like out in the backyard with my dad doing gardening, being like, never forget. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a great experience and like a memory for the two of you, though. Yeah, yeah. And then it just like, then we were both like obsessed. We were like, this is the, she's the best performer ever. That was such a good mm-hmm. night, such a good experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then we were crushed. I tried to get verified tickets last. Was it last November or like before that for the Eras tour? This is the one that was like super expensive and overpriced insane, and like ticket Ticketmaster ticket gouged lawsuit. everybody. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. Right. And I didn't even get an access code and was like, mm-hmm. oh, bummed. That's OK. I'll wait for Canada dates. And then when she initially announced the international tour in no Canada, I was like, what? Like, I would have tried so much harder to go to, like, Boston or Chicago or Philly. But anyways, I'm just talking about Taylor Swift forever. And now she's she's announced Canadian six Toronto dates. She's here for six days? She's doing six days. She's doing, like, a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, one week, and then the next week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Wow. Yeah. She's working incredibly hard. Oh, yeah. And did you see she just gave, like, I forget what it was, $50 million? in bonuses to everybody who's worked on the Eras tour be it like the truck drivers the like tech crew the dancers like she's given i mean she didn't they didn't each get 50 million dollars but like total that's how much she then like divvied up among i'm like that's incredible that's what you do that's like that is especially when you're seeing so much union work and so much so many union formations and stuff like that you need to make sure that your workers are happy for whether that was her idea or someone on her team it was a good Mm -hmm. idea it's yeah. good that they did that for sure. Yeah. Yeah, she see she seems I mean her team, it's it's clearly not just her, but her team seems very finger on the pulse of of the correct way to be viewed in history, I think. You know, the... Yeah, and I think I think it's also what we were talking about where like people or like fans and then like a celebrity figure and like the internet and like seeing things. I think Taylor Swift or like her, her assistant, her friends, her team, they are on the internet and they like see what people mm. are asking for. And she actually like takes it to heart and listens and they like implement it into their rollout. Yeah. Like yeah. with all these vault tracks, the fact that like her fans wanted all too well to be a lead single from the Red Album. So then when she re recorded, she not only made it a lead single, but she released the like 10 minute version and like Cruel Summer now, which is from the lover album that was released like years ago now is trending because of the summer I turned pretty. I'm pretty sure that's why it's trending, but it's like all of a sudden getting all these crazy streams 
Yeah. Because also, so smart, the showrunner for Summer I Turn Pretty, who's also the author of the books, she's also a Taylor Swift fan. And also, the audience that read the books are Swifties that will then watch the show. The int- Summer I Turn Pretty is basically a Taylor Swift music video. Like, the whole oh, soundtrack really? is basically wow. Taylor Swift. So that is, like, so smart to then have this, like, huge hit show that is all your music. Right. Anyways. So now she's wow. releasing Cruel Summer as a new single because the internet has, like, blown it up so much. She's like, oh, people want this now? Okay, I'll, I'll listen. Which I just think right. is smart to make it feel yeah, like that's... you're seeing everything that you're they're seeing saying. It. And... And, that, and that kind of ties back into what we were talking about, about how how people, you know, public figures are not seen as being connected the scene above above mm-hmm. everyone else and i think that 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 kind of even though she is a multi-millionaire she is seen as as like being far more down to earth because of the way that her team is able to um capitalize on viral viral stuff around her and the things yeah. that, that that clearly her her fan base are um driven by like that that clip of her going you know when um what was it when trump there was that behind the scenes clip where she was having that argument on the couch it's from her miss americana documentary from the documentary yeah. and that clip specifically goes viral about you know i haven't like, seen it i've just seen that clip yeah wanted i think she says something like she didn't think anybody wanted her to be a political figure like to to voice her political opinion yes but that she's like fuck i need to yeah like, yeah. yeah it's i mean it, again very very smart and i'm sure that that inspires a lot of her fans to really start because i think that's that's the main thing that we need is 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 more people being involved in politics because the old people are just yeah ruining everything <laughs> yeah yeah I agree. yeah <laughs> i i honestly i'm i i think i came unprepared i didn't realize how big of a taylor swift fan you were <laughs> Well, I didn't expect to talk about it either. And this then it was announced this just... morning. Yeah. That, and then I texted you and was like, I'm sorry, we need to start the podcast late. I have to, I'm in the line. And yeah. I also, uh, this was, okay, I'm just going to outline for you how stressful this was for me. So I was in Starbucks getting my coffee. Yes. And in the line on my phone for the verified presale, like registration, mm-hmm. but like in the queue to then even like register. Right. And you were messaging me on Instagram, but I had clicked a link through Instagram to get into this line. Oh God. So I'm then so I sorry. couldn't click out to message you back. And then I was like, <laughs> if I go up the elevator after, start, if I come back up the elevator, I'm going to lose service and lose my spot in line. So you hung out at the Starbucks? No. So I, I risked it. Cause I was like, I can't just ghost him for 30 minutes. Oh. So I, I risked understood. it and it, it worked I would out. I understood. It worked out. And then I came back up and then I was messaging you on my computer on Instagram. So that my phone wow. was still in line. And wow. it worked out. I at least got registered. So. Yeah. Is there is there a is there a limit on on ticket price for this one? Like would you um, if it was if it was four thousand dollars a ticket, you'd be like, yeah, okay, sign me up, take a kidney. No, I think my limit would be like 500 baht maybe a bit more Oof. maybe like 700 Oof. i don't know Oof. like i'm not in that position the last time i got tickets brennan it's I'm taylor pretty... swift come on i know but, but i'm not made of money <laughs> no honestly i think i would go i would pay maybe a thousand let me say a thousand a thousand would be my like thousand dollars wow i mean but that's insane it is insane. Like, yeah. I don't want to spend that. I would like to spend... And I don't need to be on the floor for this one. I just want to be in the venue and not, like, behind the fucking stage. Like, I want, like, decent... Yeah. Food. But yeah. I don't mind being, like, up high. I already did the floor thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you've, you, once you've been floor level once, you don't need to keep doing it. No. Like, and I, I see the videos on TikTok. I've seen her face this close to my face. I don't need to see it in real life this close to my face. I can just, like, be... And I actually think when you're back further, you get, like, the experience of the stadium better. Yeah, I've noticed that. Especially, you know, you know on, on slow songs and things and people get their flashlights out and do the waving thing. That's a very beautiful thing to see. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, I saw Justin Bieber... When was this? 2012? 2013? It was wow. 2013 because the next step had just aired, and I went wow. with I went with Jenny, who plays Chloe on the next step, 
And Victoria was there also, but not yes. with us. She was like kind of in the same section. But Jenny and I got tickets like day of. We were like last minute, whatever. We were in the very back row. Yeah. And it was still a blast. And I wasn't a Bieber fan, but I had like such a blast. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then the three of us on our way out found each other. And we were like, oh my God. And like hugged. Oh, and yeah. then one person spotted us. And then a bunch of Next Step fans wanted pictures. But then people didn't know who we were because the show had like just started airing yeah yeah yeah, people just saw people taking pictures with us and then this is at the time too i kind of had like a bieber swipe so i think people from afar thought i was stop so then people were only wanting photos with me not with vic and jenny so then the girls got like (laughs) sandwiched out and it was just me like posing with people are you kidding me yeah it was and i was like what is going on i'm like (laughs) She's Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> like you want to yeah. do her. <laughs> yeah. No, they no. they oh, wow. They it with Walmart Bieber. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, if it comes down to it, then you know, you've got a second career as a Justin Bieber <laughs> a impersonator. <look-alike. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. God. Yeah. Uh, do you have time for a uh, for an advice question? Yeah. I'm gonna keep you for a little bit. Fabulous. Yeah. This is from Tilly. Hi, Tilly. And Tilly, hi Tilly, Tilly, ah, uh, hi Tilly, there you go, I said it to the camera. Uh, what is your advice for someone about to graduate high school? Hmm. Especially these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I just did a whole, I just did a whole, um, not like seminar, but like a talk with a bunch of my students and their parents um, just about like post-secondary options, but this is like specific to dance. Um, but I, I remember one thing I said that then one of the parents at the end came up and was like, that was really good advice. Thank you for saying that. And I was like, it just came to me. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, but what I said was that like, if you have a little, like a little glimmer in your heart, like no matter how small of like, you know, whether it's like, oh, I really want to get an agent or I really want to start a YouTube channel or I really want to audition for Juilliard or whatever it is, just do it. Because the fact that you believe in yourself to believe yourself to be good enough to audition at Juilliard or do this thing that you believe to be like really impressive, the fact that you have a glimmer in your heart means that like you have it in you to be able to do it, to, to be that. Um, and I just think like 17 feels so old. I was 17 when I graduated high school, but I guess you could also like some people are 18, but 17, 18, it feels like you're so old and you're like in a rush to like make a decision, but there's like no big rush really. And you should just explore and you can explore multiple little like glimmers, but like if there's that one that like you always think about and you're like, oh, I, but I can't, I have to go to this bachelor of English program, I don't know, bachelor of science program. But then you're like, but I really wish I was taking horseback riding lessons. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Like do it. You should just do it. You should, you know, listen to that little gun in your heart and try it. Um, Yes. That would be my, I, I would, I would, I would completely endorse that because I didn't. Hmm. And the entire time that I didn't, I was trying to listen to it, but not accepting it. I, I have always wanted to be an actor, clearly. But I did a lot of stuff trying to do other things that were more acceptable or more um, like safe. Or, yeah. safe. Not even traditional, because I went to university and did video game design. Oh, I, I didn't know that. Yeah. I did cool. video game design at the University of Bolton in North in North England. And uh, the entire time I was there, I spent it trying to get up in front of people hosting or uh, open mic nights or whatever, anything to be in front of an audience. That's and so nothing. And it was like there was no glass breaking moment that, oh, maybe I want to be in front of an audience here maybe i'm just like i should be acting right now um and there wasn't an acting program 
at the university. There, there wasn't any like amateur dramatics or, you know, acting club or anything like that. So I was just, you know, hosting and, and organizing events so that I could host them. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and so then I graduated. Like, I didn't do any of my coursework because I wasn't inspired by it at all. I was forcing no, myself yeah. to do this degree that was complete waste of time. And did you and finish? Did you like finish? I finished. I, oh, then... I mean, like, I skinned through with the lowest possible grade ever. Um, and, and then, uh, and it was at that point that my mum was like, well, why don't you audition for drama school then? And I was like, mm. oh, right. Yes, I could there. do that. Yeah. And then I, I did that and didn't get in. And then at that point, I was like, I'm too old for this shit. So then I just moved country and started a career elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I was going to ask, why did you choose to move to Canada? Yeah, no, it was, it was England's terrible. And I wanted to go to New York and I couldn't work there. So I came to Canada instead. Uh -huh. And it just oh, happened. Oh, did you do to... the like Commonwealth visa? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so, and it just so happens that like, the year that I came here was the year that it started really ramping up in terms of production. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, That's like, awesome. Hollywood North was the term that was being thrown around the year that I got here. And I was yeah. like, oh. I know. I noticed a huge difference because I was going to move to Vancouver for a while. Mm -hmm. um, because there was just way more work out there. Yeah. And then and I then moved there, was a there for a couple of months. And then all of a sudden, everything shifted to Toronto. Yep. That yeah. was the year I got here, yeah. yeah. So I would say to Tilly, I would, I, I would agree with you on that one. It is Tilly, right? Yeah, Tilly. Tilly. <clears throat> oh, God. Starbucks is backing up on me Oh, already. no. I mean, I'm even getting a little burpy <laughs> now. I'm wondering. I might be a little lactose intolerant. You say this now at the end of the podcast? <laughs> well, see, I had a McDonald's milkshake on the weekend, and it tasted delicious. But then... You Chaos were paying for ensued. it later. Yeah. yeah and uh, and I was like, hmm, I haven't had a milkshake in a while. <laughs> maybe it was. And then I had an ice cream cone and kind of same deal. So maybe. Uh, oh, no. You're getting old, Brennan. Getting old. I know. That's it. I never used You're on to the be... downward. It's all downhill from My here. My stomach to... used to be like a gut of steel. Yeah, same. Now I'm like, I can't have gluten. I oh, God. can't have chili oil. I can't have. It's like all these Chili things. oil? Yeah, I get, like, really bad acid reflux and, like, heartburn. <laughs> it sucks. And, like, hot sauce. I love hot sauce. Yeah. But if I have too much, like, and it's, like, then I'm heartburn all night, can't sleep. Oh, God. Oh, my God, I hate being 28. <laughs> we'll talk. We'll talk oh, later. I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what it's like being my age later, all right? <laughs> um, Tilly, I would say that, uh, yes, Try and try and be true to the that that kind of secret desire that we all kind of put in the back of our mind and isn't like something that we really indulge, but it actually ends up playing out in other areas of our life. Um, and then also, I would I would say to be gentle to yourself, be kind to yourself, be gentle because um, you are entering the world at a point where. Not only is everything being super commoditized as fast as possible, the urge to like, well, okay, I'm slightly good at painting, so I, I better make money off my painting quick. I gotta, I gotta, blah, blah, blah. Um, there is that drive right now, mm -hmm. and it's not good. It is not helpful. It's not healthy. Because if you commoditize all of your hobbies, you have nothing to enjoy in your life. <laughs> yeah. So make sure that you have. First of all, have a third place. Work, home, and a third place. Have your third place, whether it's coffee shop, library, uh, a sport that you do, whatever. Um, and then, uh, and then just keep a little, keep keep a little something to yourself. It's just a thing because you don't have to be good at it because it's just a hobby. If it's making YouTube videos, make shitty YouTube videos. It's okay. I make shitty YouTube videos. It's fine. <laughs> We all do it. And, you know, make really bad TikToks, but do it for you. Don't do it because mm -hmm. you want to try and become an influencer. If you if if that's your if that's your goal, I really want to be uh, in the top one percent of YouTube. Okay, then that's your that's your goal. That's your drive. Learn as much as you can. 
If you want to be an influencer, okay, what does influencers do? But have a little hobby that is just yours, that doesn't is not meant to make you money, that is not anything else but to just enjoy and and f and is enriching. It makes you feel good about yourself or makes you feel like, oh, look at this little thing that I did. It's great. Um, like me and then, my plants. <laughs> yeah, grow 18 plants and yeah. then start an underground plant business selling illegal plants out of your basement. Exactly. Uh, That's, the key. That's my third place. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the only other thing I would say is remember, try to remember that you will be, by the time you're 30, you will be, you will have been three different people by the time you get to 30. Yeah. You, you, your brain still developing, changing, etc., and you will change everything about yourself three more times before you get to 30. So don't feel super committed to any one thing and that, like, dropping something is going to be, like, um, like, it's, oh, I can't, I can't stop dancing because I've been doing it for so long. Yeah, but you were a different person then, and now you're a different person, and that's okay. Yeah. And now you okay collect to, like, plants. It's okay to like put a dream down for a while if it's not currently like calling you. Absolutely. And if it's right for you, it's going to find its way back to you. Like I quit Absolutely. dance for two years and then yeah. was like, oh, I kind of miss it. I'll take a couple ballet classes just for fun. And then Tiny Pretty Things audition came up and like I got in shape really quickly and booked mm. that job and then was like dancing again and fell in love with dance again. But like I had not danced for two and a half years before. Yeah, and you're just adding strings to your bow, mm -hmm. adding mm -hmm. tools to your to tools to your toolbox that tools might to come in toolbox. useful later later yeah. on later on down the line. You know. Yeah, that's very. <laughs> so good that would advice. be yeah. That would be my that would be my advice. Um, Brennan, what what is what is going on that you can plug right now that you would like to plug? Well, that is not breaking any union laws. I know. I'm trying to think. <laughs> I do have a new show coming out, but I it's not been announced. My oh, congratulations! Like, that I'm on it. Thank you. It's not been announced <laughs> that I'm on it or what my okay. role is, so I can't plug it. But okay, that's well, um, and also I imagine it might be might be a bit tricky to be plugging anything right now. Yeah, but yeah. it'll come out in the new year. It's still like a long ways away. But what okay. I can plug is uh my youtube channel that has been my like i've like kick-started it again i feel like i go through phases with youtube where i'm like yep. heavy into it for like two months and i'm like see ya um yep. but this time is different and uh dance <laughs> start <dates>. the counter <laughs> yeah <laughs> sorry i dance talked over dates, <laughs> um is my new baby and i'm having so much fun making those videos and it seems like tell us about really enjoying them. And... Tell us about Dance Dates just quickly before, in so, case people haven't watched it. The first season of Dance Dates um, is leaning on my next step connections. Um, but my eventual dream for the show is that kind of what like Chicken Shop Date is for like the music industry, where like mm -hmm. rappers or singers will go on and that'll be like a part of their press when going on a tour or whatever. Um, that could be that for like, or my, my show would be that for dance or like dance adjacent um, people, even mm -hmm. like actors that have like a movement background, like say, say this was like the 10th season of the show and it was like huge and whatever. Margot Robbie could come on and like, we would recreate the disco from the Barbie movie mm -hmm. as part of like Barbie press. Right. Um, so that's my like eventual dream. But for right now we're recreating uh, fan favorite and like iconic dances from the next step. Um, but I have a few other guests planned and lined up that are not next step people. That's so, exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of like peppering in some next step castmates. One, it's really fun to like reconnect. Mm -hmm. Um, and I do want there to be a certain like nostalgia to the show. Uh, yeah. I'm not gonna like, give away who are who are. No, guys, don't. But, that's that's yeah, you got to tease like, that. That's great. Like that. Yeah, that's a great. And uh, and you're at Brennan Clost on Instagram and whatever. At Brennan Clost on everything, even yep. YouTube. I think it's just at Brennan Clost. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thank yeah. you for joining us, Brennan. This has been thank great. Thank you so much for having me. This is so much fun. Yay! You're a great and... host. Ah, oh, thank you. Uh, and we will be back next week. Thank you for watching and press all of the 
the buttons to like subscribe. and subscribe and all, all that nonsense. And thank you and and goodbye. Farewell. <laughs>